does developing a humble ego help towards enlightenment? A humble ego? Yeah, I don't think there's such a thing. I think there's an ego that can pretend to be humble. But true humility occurs when the ego starts disappearing. As long as there's an ego present, the chances of humility are probably very limited. But the chances of pretending to be humble is very high. Because the ego loves to be special. So it'll be the most humble. That is not humility. That is it's still competing. I'm, that is pride. I'm so humble. I don't think so. True humility occurs when the ego disappears. I wanted to ask you, um, a lot of times you talk about you calling your mind, you lovingly calling your mind the bullshitter. Yeah. Or affectionately. And affectionately. I to... Affectionately. Why do you always add that part? The affectionately. Because quite often people will judge their mind and hurt themselves in the judgment. And I've never hurt myself in the judgment of what I've found inside my own mind. And so I affectionately call it the bullshitter. Because when we judge our mind and we're harsh with ourselves, we're creating a schism inside ourselves between the part that is judging and being harsh and the part that is being judged. And a mind that is like that can never truly fully relax. If the mind can accept itself totally and hold itself in affection, it can relax. But unfortunately, we've been programmed at school and at home to not accept parts of our mind. And so people can't truly relax. There's a state of tension because there's parts that judge other parts and quite often parts that are hiding. Self-acceptance, as far as I'm concerned, is the beginning of higher consciousness and a requirement for it. How can I stay grounded when people direct anger at me? What other people think of you, Corey, is none of your business. Why do you want to make it your business? It's their business. Yeah, that's true. It's true. Uh, you know, people are uh, people out there are at different levels of insanity. <laughs> what they think of you is, you know, really their their, their own judgments, <laughs> their imagination. They've put it together. Why would you be concerned about it? There's a lot of fruit bats out there, mate. And so uh, I've never really worried about what other people think of me. Uh, I've been more concerned about what I think of me. And it has nothing to do with other people. It has nothing to do with that, what they think. It is totally related to how much I accept and love myself. If you're worried about what other people think of you, you might need to have a look at yourself and see what it is about you that you don't accept fully. I've never been concerned about what other people think, you know? Why would I be? There's a lot of crazies out there. You ever walked around Perth at night time? <laughs> We've got one out there now. <laughs> Outside here, they're having a, having a good sing song about nothing. It's like, maybe I should go up to him and ask him what he thinks of me, eh? And then get then get concerned with what's it, what he's saying. I don't think so. People are, have, a, have have every right in the world to have an opinion. Every right in the world. But so what? Opinions are opinions. They're not facts. Why are you so concerned about what other people think of you? I'd be looking at that. It sounds like somehow you're reliant on other people's acceptance to be okay with yourself rather than just being okay with yourself. I was going to ask how I, how I can stop selling out. 
it, I know we we talked about it, but it still happens. Yeah. To get other people's uh, acceptance, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, look, man, I lived on the streets for a while as a, as a teenager of Perth. Being concerned about what other people think of you just really is not worthwhile. It's actually okay to be unacceptable. Unless you make it not okay. I've always been the black sheep. I've always been the rebel. I've always been the one that was in trouble. And I just made it okay for me to be me. How about you making it okay for you to be you? No matter how broken you might be, make it okay for you to be you. My ego is spiritual ego. How can I end it? Meditation is not helping. <laughs> The dirtiest ego on the planet, the spiritual ego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's, here's the deal. And there's two deals, really. You can either go for heart or you can go for beingness or you can go for both. So there's two deals. And the deal with heart is quite simple. Everything for heart and nothing for you. And the deal with beingness is similar. It's everything for beingness and nothing for you. Now, you can interchange the word beingness for truth or God, but that's the only deal there is. People who are awake have given their life to God or truth or beingness. They don't have a life anymore. And people who find a lot of heart in their life have given their life to heart. That's the deal. There is no other deal. It's up to you. <laughs>